Take a look at the top five. Missy Parkin took the lead after 12 games and held on. Danielle McEwen qualified second. Brianna Cote, the reigning player of the year, the number three position in the opening match, features the two most recent defending champions here in Egan, Shannon O'Keefe in 2019 and Dasha Kovalova in 2021, along with Hall of Famer Kelly Kulik. I'm Dave Lamont, and let's get ready to bowl. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number five seat from Ukraine, Dasha Kovalova! Yes, Dasha, it's your turn. 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 And Shannon O'Keefe with the option has decided to let Dasha open on the left lane. And Kelly will give us uh, an info on the pattern here in just a moment. A bit of a mixer, but light on the seven. As we break the pattern down, Dave, it's 45 feet the women bowled on this week. So really long, tight angles to that one three pocket. Dasha won this event last year. She's a two-time champion at Louisville and also has the USBC Queens to her name. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number four seed from Shiloh, Illinois, Shannon O'Keefe. She may be on television more than anyone uh, in bowling. Uh, she is as consistent and as talented as they come. And kick save and a beauty on the 10 pin. Shannon Styles classic four step approach sliding. 28, 19, 18 at the arrows. 43 feet is that hash marker. So here's the end of the pattern at 45 feet right there. That's where you're going to see the ball just start to tip up and hit that 1 3 pocket every single time. Yeah, long pattern this week for the ladies here in Minnesota. And, ooh, a messenger is going to come over and fail to do its job. So a lot of those carried this week, Dave. Pins fell quite easily here in Cedarvale Lanes. High scoring house, high scoring pattern. Yeah, just to get through here. Uh, Dasha averaged 226 to qualify for fifth. Shannon 216. And that was just after the round of 12. Clears up the spare. Dasha in frame number two. And Dasha had an interesting thing to say today. Uh, we interviewed her. So, you know, what's the secret? She goes, spite. I'm bowling <laughs> with spite. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was kidding. She might not have been. And that came out of Kelly, her being upset with uh, the way she was bowling yesterday. She felt like she was bowling good and not getting any breaks at all. And the disappointment led to some anger, and she felt like that anger actually locked her into a positive zone. And it obviously worked to some degree because here she is in the opening match. Well, as you said, it, she was channeling that frustration, which then turned into even greater focus and attention to her deliveries. I actually crossed with her in that oh, second round after they cut to the top 27 women. And uh, her focus just became very finite and she shot a big game to make it in the round of 12 and it was great to make it into the TV show tonight. That is a tricky shot, obviously, and an open frame early on here for Dasha. for eight spread that she missed, 45 feet. Lane is only 60 feet in length, so at the end of the pattern, there's only that 15 feet to the head pin zone. 
the uh, sleeper pins were definitely an issue when shooting sparrows this week, but most of the women left a lot of single pins because of the high scores. Six championship round appearances last year, tied for the most on the tour. Yeah, so when you dissect the pattern, she's sliding just one or two boards right of Shannon. Same target at the arrows, 12, 13 break point down at the lanes. Because the pattern is so long, again, we know about longer patterns to play closer to the head pin. And I think the common characteristics between all five women is they're very good straight players and they like to throw it firm. Strike there for O'Keefe. Another characteristic, major championships. We have four of our five players with at least one major championship in their bags. Shannon's game, very simple. Four-step approach. We know she has later time and she gets the ball into the swing a little bit later. Everything is level here. Again, I always like to look at the head and how much it's going to move. Look at the knee bend before she's going into the slide. Now she's going to create that great leverage at the foul line with her shoulder. And we all know Shannon's got a very aggressive follow through and she hits her target 98% of the time. That came through the little high and breaks up the 4-9. And should Shannon run the ladder today, this would be PWBA title number 15 for her. That places her tied for 15th all time with Lori Nichols, Anne-Marie Dugan, Cindy Coburn Carroll, and new Hall of Famer Kim Adler. Routine. 14 pin lead so far. Dasha came up light last time on the right lane. Got to observe the women bowl and their, their 20 minutes of practice on this TV pair. Right lane definitely seems to have a little bit more of a hold spot or a hang spot down the lane. You can see Shannon almost left the 4-9, the ball shaped sooner. Let's see if Dasha can make up for that last frame on this right lane. And that was at Wichita State where Dasha was a college superstar. It seemed like that should have gotten a better result. Yeah, I can't quite kick out the 10. That was a common leave. When you hit the pocket, it was very easy to access the pocket all week long, and ball selection was the key for the women. And then from there, it was just how the pins carry. It wasn't always a flush shot. You saw some of the light shakers carry, technology strikes along the way. And unfortunately, Dasha, when she said bowling had a spite, she left a lot of those 10 pins this week. Yeah, well I think that's what was starting to frustrate her. She felt like she had made good shots and wasn't getting the reward. Dasha's game, she kind of reminds me a little bit kind of a Walter Ray type of game. Very delicate, but watch, first big step, ball goes a little bit up in the air. Look at the high backswing, off the screen there, comes down in this way, and really tries to gain a lot of power through her swing. Long slide, great knee bend, left arm is just off to the side, and a really extensive follow through. The follow through especially reminiscent, I think. She takes out the first 15 feet of the lane just because of the length of her arms and how well she projects the ball. There she gets a kick on the 10. She needed that strike. Her arm swing was so high, it was off the screen for me to draw. <laughs> <laughs> but she does not pull down the top of the swing. Really, really strong. We'll get you a bigger monitor. Yeah, next look time. right there. But look, the knee bend, the follow through. Balance arm, she's hitting the same back spot as Shannon is. And you'll see most of the women, they're going to start in that same zone all night long and just go further and further left as they break down. A wraparound on what looked to be a perfect shot. 
Yeah, with that little puddle, I call it a little puddle in front of that pocket. The ball just doesn't kind of get into that roll that we're all looking for. That roll is what really gets the strikes to put up on the board. You see it just extends a little bit longer and watch the six pin kind of wrap itself around the 10, almost a ringing 10, but just has to get the ball to start up. We say out here, start up a little bit sooner into that forward roll to maximize the amount of strikes. Smothers the 10 pin. Owner of three majors, one Queens title, two PWBA Tour Championships, and 11 standard titles. And last year, she picked up a victory in the opening event of the year. Of course, with her coaching in McKendry, where she picked up another NCAA championship this year. She's a multiple-time coach of the year. She she's occasionally sacrifices an event uh, to be with her ladies. And sweeps aside the 10. Yeah, in our close-up screen, too, you can see that ball just kind of picked up and rolled forward a little bit earlier, hence the strike in the sixth frame. The other interesting thing is we've had so much McKendry on these telecasts. Shannon finally getting a chance as the mentor, having had a chance to bowl, watch her students bowl as well. Take a look at what's happening after this. Brianna Cote is standing by, and then Danielle McEwen, and then at the top, Missy Parkin, who got to the number one seed last year in Egan, but did not win the match, losing to Dasha. And uh, Missy was spectacular, especially over the last 12 games in just grabbing this tournament and taking off. where we stand through five and a half. And Kovalova had that open frame in the second on the 248, left the four pin. Otherwise, she's been fine. Well, we talked about Missy Park in just a moment ago. She's here. Hey, top seed. Uh, how are you feeling after watching these first five and a half frames here? What have you seen? Uh, feeling really good. I'm just going to continue to keep watching the matches as they progress and this just go out there and see how my ball reaction looks. Missy, you got a great big bag of tools, but what tools really did you use this week that made you feel that got you successful here to being the number one seed? Yeah, I was able to really use my ball speed and also more axis rotation. So I actually was trying on purpose to spin it more, uh, especially when the front started to go away, the back ends got tighter, and I used that to my advantage. Missy, thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you a little bit later on today. Congratulations on a great tournament. And there is the woman who beat her in the finals a year ago, Dasha Kovalova, who threw a big game in that championship here in Egan. And this is a very popular stop. Uh, players just praising everything about this center. It's a wonderful facility. The staff went out of their way to make us feel very comfortable. You know, we appreciate the snacks in the in the locker room, <laughs> the um, caddies to help us bring the balls up and down the stairs before and after the block. So great facility to be part of. Uh oh. It slipped. Yeah, that one slid away, leaving her with the bucket. Yeah, the difference here. So what Shannon did, as the lanes got tighter, Shannon kind of paralleled into it and just got even closer to the head pin. Dasha got a little firm here at the bottom of the swing. Watch as she releases the ball. Just accelerates a little bit more. Head goes a little bit further to the left. Hand wraps around it some more. She was 18 to 12. Notice the direction of the ball. Two boards. And on this pattern, two boards makes a big difference. Skates through it. Hits the three pin right in the face, but leaves the bucket standing. Trying to get the bucket. Oh, she went wide right with that one. And two open frames on two difficult spares for sure, but for a professional, uh, the odds are greater they're going to make them. So all of a sudden, she's down 27 against uh, what has been so far a very steady Shannon O'Keefe. Obviously a lot going on in Dasha's mind regarding Ukraine. She lost her grandfather recently. Um, 
while she was competing in the Queens. Her mom is with her, her dad too. And her mom is here in Minnesota. Yeah. Looking ball there, and well, she's just not getting some of the breaks when she throws a good shot. No, unfortunately not. And there were, you know, many women had that up and down, kind of a roller coaster. Uh, Missy, Brianna, very, very steady. Danielle, very steady throughout the event. Dasha made a big run at the end to get there. She hits the break point at the right spot. Watch the six pin just fall flat in front of the gutter. And again, because the pattern's so long, the ball kind of deflects a little bit further to the right. Doesn't quite have a chance to roll through the pocket, hitting the five pin to take out the eight pin, and the ball taking out the nine. Only hits about four pins. The one, three, five, eight. Cross lane for the spare. Converts no problem. Well, that's not going to be enough, though, the way that Shannon O'Keefe is bowling. Now, strange things do happen in the sport. We all know that. But Shannon in a position now to uh, really put a hammer lock on this game and get set to perhaps face Brianna Cote. Well, we know Brianna's next, but Shannon getting closer to being in that top position to take on Brianna next. cold-blooded right there. Very good shot by Shannon, of course. Just look for those little subtle keys. Ball just rolling through that pocket a little bit more. Key things, where she's sliding? 28, 18, 11. Watch the ball just go and drive through that pocket and not deflect at all. Lead of 37 off of a double. Make it three in a row for Shannon O'Keefe. Left lane has a little bit more earlier mid roll. You can see the green pin on the ball just kind of stand taller, migrate forward. Really tall pin placement on that ball, closer to the vertical axis line for all you ball drillers out there. Gets the ball into a forward roll really, really quick off the spot. Max score for Shannon, 249, and Dasha must put a strike up here to have any sort of chance in this match. And instead went through the face, leaving behind a 6-10, so it's looking like it will be O'Keefe and Cote, and the defending champion, Dasha Kovalova, is headed to a fifth place finish. She made the move, she made a ball change in that frame. Dasha, I know, likes to keep her angles very straight, and in front of her, she likes to use ball speed. That ball had definitely more shape on the back, but needed to move inward for it to be effective. Well, this has been her third missed spare. This one won't have uh, any kind of an effect at all, uh, but the first two were certainly costly. But let's face it, Shannon O'Keefe is also bowling a solid, solid game. Yeah, Shannon had a, a decent first block. She was, I think, outside the number after the first six games, made a great big jump. The second round of six in that night block on Friday night, and then Saturday, once they reduced the amount of players in the field, she did what she does best. She keeps climbing up the ladder until she gets to the show. And she went from eighth to 11th to fifth to fourth. And now we'll go on to our second match of the day here in Minnesota. <laughs> common question. Everyone asks me, hey, Kelly, how do you carry the 10-pin? How do you carry the 10-pin? And sometimes I think I have the answer, and other times I don't. <laughs> There's just, you know, that geometric shape, the triangle, and, and, and sadly enough, within our sport, you execute well, you do your job, you get to the foul line, you post a shot, you hit your target, but you're just not guaranteed that strike. And I think that's the most frustrating thing about our sport. Dasha is obviously a great bowler, but great to get here, and I'm sure we'll see her again in a future telecast this season. Oh, well, there's no doubt about it. And this is only the third of 12 stops on this PWBA tour. And Dasha is too good to not be back under the lights again, either on CBS Sportsnet or Bowl TV. Imagine what type of spike she'll have after this, after this she round. She will be full of spike, yes. no question about it. And now that Shannon is assured of moving on, we, we're going to talk a little bit in the next game about what she has done over the last year to improve her game. And it might be something you wouldn't guess. 
Ball change for Shan in the ninth frame. She knows she secured the match and win will go on. So now she's just gathering some information. Yeah, quick conversation with uh, a ball rep. And uh, is that, we have another ball coming out here just as a tester, maybe? We did, yep. She's changing to an asymmetric bowling ball. She was doing a symmetric bowling ball. Now she's going a little bit more aggressive, meaning it's a stronger weight block inside. The ball should start up a little bit earlier in comparison. Still sliding in the same spot. Bringing 10. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what, when you're in that position, it never hurts to find out what else is working for you. Yeah, you're, you're trying, as a bowler, you're, we're trying to control the pocket. When you can hit the 1-3 or the 1-2 for the left-hander, you can then make a move off of that. It might be a ball change. It might be a speed change, which is most frequently common out here. It could be a slight angle change. So once you start going through your tools in order to get you that carry where you can find information the first four frames and then strike out the rest of the game. So Shannon O'Keefe. Just one more shot before she moves on to take on Brianna Cote. And a little more work. Yeah, and Shannon, the thing of it is, like, our keys as athletes, you know, when you miss, you still want to get nine. And that's exactly what Shannon did. She has four, nine spare frames. The rest are all strike conversions. She's going to try another bowling ball here, go back to a, a pearlized symmetric bowling ball in her hand, and just see what type of reaction it gives her in comparison to the other ones she's already used. Well, another strong reaction. It's either nine or a strike, and that's why Shannon O'Keefe is moving on in a match number two to take on Brianna Cote, the reigning PWBA Player of the Year. Right there, there's finally something good that happened for Dasha. <laughs> yeah, and this is if I would just tell Dasha, again, watch her ball motion, okay? Key things. Speed, foul line, she's about 17, 18, leaks a little bit further right. So if they're getting so much hang, I would tell that person, get away from that hang spot. So lesson out there for you watching, move further left inside and try to get away from that hang spot. Like that. Is she going to be tired of that? <laughs> It'd be great in the Pro-Am where nine is all you need. We saw that a lot in the Pro-Am on Thursday night with a great group of, of fans. They sold out Pro-Am, by the way. There was a waiting list to get in that Pro-Am on Thursday. The folks here in Egan, just outside of Minneapolis, have really supported this event. And cheering for their defending champion right to the last. Shannon O'Keefe defeating Dasha Kovalova, 227 to 159. Uh, so Dasha finishing in the fifth position, but that's back-to-back -back shows in this building for her. When they come back next year, uh, she will undoubtedly be in a good frame of mind. Next up, O'Keefe versus Cote. This ought to be a spectacular match. Match number two, Twin Cities Open. Cities Open with Kelly Kulik. I'm Dave Lamont. You saw Shannon O'Keefe defeat Dasha Kovalova 227 to 159. The defending champion has been beaten by a past champion of this event. And her opponent now, the third seed, Brianna Cote, has elected to let Shannon O'Keefe start this match on the left lane. Brianna was never any worse than eighth in qualifying, an average 227.9 to get here. That was the same thing she was doing in the first game when she defeated Dasha. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number three seed from Tucson, Arizona, Brianna Cote. the 
nose and broke up a lot of traffic. They're leaving it with just a single pin. Brianna's in the same part of the lane as Shannon is. I think Shannon moved in a little bit deeper inside in the left lane. Good first shot, though, coming in from the gate. The players, I believe, only get six shots of warm-up when they come to the TV pair. Remember, if I said if you can't strike, nine is a good lead. Well, that certainly helped O'Keefe in the first match. All right, clean start. Yeah. That first frame out of the way, calm the nerves a bit. Brianna Cote's style is very nice. Four-step approach. There's three, two, three. Now, she's got a lot of compact here with her knees. She's very low to the foul line. Notice her backswing is very level to the shoulder itself. Left arm is out to the side. Deep slide here. She stays behind the ball for a very long time. And I look for that window of opportunity when the foot stops and where the ball is in the swing as it's coming forward through the slot. Hurry, and it does. The mixer was a big key for a lot of the women this week here. Well, you mentioned the pin carry, and the reaction on here is very good. Yeah, five-step approach. I think I said four earlier, but she does start with that left foot. 17-18 at the arrows. Ten zone right down there. You see the six pin shoves off to the side. The mixer strike was a big carry for the women this week. Got a hurry big time, and that one did not come back to the pocket. So, an odd leave there of a for Shannon O'Keefe. Yeah, I watched it when she slides to the foul, and you know, she almost like her hip almost pops forward, causing her back to come backwards. Watch, she gets very upright here, and it's almost like she leans backwards a little bit more, fans it out at the bottom with the release, and you can see it needs to be over here, where it's extending almost towards the tendon zone, doesn't quite get back. We mentioned hips with Shannon. She's been fighting a left hip problem for a while now. She said there's no structural damage, which she's happy about. And you pretty much named the therapy. She's taken a, a shot at it. Yeah, often enough, we try to accelerate with the ball. And what happens is we'll pull down from the top of the swing aggressively, and it causes us to take our left arm, pull it back even further, and then our torso becomes engaged. And that's when we miss either outside or inside. So just lost the leverage at the foul line. It could have been the hip right there, Dave. Stays down much better in that shot. And there's your result, 10 straight in the pit. This is really solid execution. She's really tall here. Two, three. Now watch her upper body go a little bit. Doesn't come down. It has that body angle right there, whereas before on the last shot, she really kind of brought her back backwards even more, almost like she was projecting her hips forward and just lost the, the leverage at the line. And again, second time on this lane she's gone through the nose, and this one, unfortunately, is going to be costly. 467, she doesn't have as much ball speed as Shannon, although Brianna does throw it very firmly. She's using a little bit more angle, sliding 29-30, 18 at the arrows. She's getting even further right down the lane. So she's using more of the lane to kind of shape it throughout the spot. Picture a banana-type curve in your head where Shannon's pretty much throwing darts at the pocket. Well, Brianna used only one ball for the first ball. Obviously, the spare ball doesn't count. And had no plans on changing today. It would uh, be a major event if she made a ball change. I don't think it's the ball that she used during qualifying and in the round, the last round of, of six games, the fourth qualifying round. Uh, but as again, you come over TV pair, things are different and you have to react to what you see in front of you. She might make a ball change going forward in the upcoming frames, but average 227, very, very high scoring this week. And that was third place. Third, yes. Yeah, that'll tell you what would uh, folks were up against here to, to make the show. Well, the left lane is okay. It's the right lane that's giving her some trouble in the first four frames. What's that conversation about? Two, two. 
as I listened in, she really liked the delivery of her hand. She's like, I threw that good. And when you throw the ball good and you have a reaction like that, you're, you start questioning, it's not you, it's the lane and the ball. So there's a choice. Keep chasing it left where Shannon is now about 20 at the arrows. <laughs> or she'll have to switch balls and try to stay in the same area. But Shannon's already progressively moving in left. This is what she needs to do. She needs to stay on top of Shannon. Key spots here, okay, for Shannon. She's gonna be sliding at about 30. So right, her lay down point is gonna be right around here at 18, 17, uh, 22. When she releases the ball again, she's gonna pass it, ah, don't mind that mark there, she's gonna pass it right about there at 20. The next key point is gonna be the break point. And, oh my, an unfortunate break there. It will look to be a shot just about as good as the last one for Shannon O'Keefe. Yeah, real good shot by Shannon. She's an executioner. She makes shots every single time. One, three, three goes into the six. Six angles itself right around the 10 pin. I swear sometimes there's 11 pins in the rack, Dave. Well, Honest to goodness. They hide them well. They do. <laughs> You'd expect strong execution. On a spare like that, O'Keefe, enjoying the advantage right now through four and a half. You got some friends and fans over there. I think a couple of her McHenry folk are over there. Her husband is here, of course. Now, Brianna liked the shot last time on the right lane. She has to keep chasing it left. She's got to get in the same part of the lane that Shannon's in. Has not changed equipment. Again, through the nose. That's three for three there. On yeah. that lane, the left lane's fine. And she's moved each single time. Somewhere along, she's there's a hook spot that developed in the lane. She's using a more aggressive cover on the bowling ball. Sliding 30, 31. 18 and a half, 19. 12, right at the break point here. Same section right here, right between those slots. Perfect alignment right there. But the ball's got that kick reaction. Almost like somebody was standing and just kicked it left to shoot at a strong angle towards the head pin. Right, smothers that easily. You mentioned that nine could be a good miss. She's only had one of those on that lane. That was in the first frame, and even that shot wasn't pretty. Since then, she had an open frame in third, and then the eight spare in the fifth. This lane, she's flushed it twice. Yeah, now she's there's gonna something's gonna have to occur. She's got to take a giant step left. But the ball's done the same three things every time she's moved, so that tells me it has to be a ball change. She needs something that's cleaner through the middle there that's going to push long and extend itself to that pocket. Well, she owns that way. She likes the left. Big smile, a little bit of relief. Got to try to keep some pressure on Shannon O'Keefe as we go to break. O'Keefe looking to make it two in a row. By 21, let's check in with our number two seed, Danielle McHugh. And Danielle, what have you learned from watching these first uh, this match and a half we've had so far? Um, I'm just trying to stay warm over here. I'm watching how the girls are breaking down the lanes and how they're playing, and I'm just going to keep an open mind when I get over there, make my good practice shots, and go from there. Danielle, back-to-back -back shows from last week's Queens. What did you carry over from last week that helped you perform so great this week? A lot of fire. <laughs> <laughs> I like that answer, young lady. Well, good luck in the next coming match. Thank you. Thank you very much, Danielle. Let's get back to business here. We'll go keep on the right-hand lane and in the lead. And the difference here in this match is this lane, because Shannon has bowled beautifully on this right-hand lane in this game. She's coming off of a strike. And she also had uh, a spare, but she's at least had much more success on this than Brianna has so far. And continues to have. That's a double on this lane, the pesky right lane for Shannon O'Keefe. Yeah, it's very simple. Figure, picture an exact diagonal line from the foul line to the release, I'm going to follow the ball as it goes down the path all the way down the lane. So that's an extension of it, and then the ball just tips up at the last moment. It's like you got a shotgun, you got a target, you're aiming for that target. At the last possible moment, the ball changes direction. Keep the angles tight, keep the speed up, keep it consistent. That 
Oh, wow. That's the second time in a row on that lane. She's had a ringing 10. So she is absolutely attracted to the pocket right now. Just uh, not getting all the results. This is where the mental game takes over too, Dave, because your frustration is now starting to rise. Like, what do I have to do to carry? What am I missing? Is there something going on? But you have to maintain that level of toughness and just grind it out and keep making great shots. Well, it's funny you mention that. Because in the last year, Shannon told me today that she's read 35 books. I believe it. On mental toughness. So that's that's been in a year. It's been up that we're May to May. Uh, different authors, different ideas. Uh, Tim Grover, Michael Jordan's former trainer, wrote a couple of them. Uh, so she has really leaned on that. Physically, she's Shannon O'Keefe. Well, yeah. she physical, her game physical is, yeah. is top notch. She executes every single time. It's that mental edge for herself as well as her team. Brianna Cote makes a ball change on this right lane. And instead of going through the nose, that time it slipped away right. But she did something she said it was only going to take a drastic moment of the match to do, and we have reached that point. But uh, still, the execution, is it the execution of the ball? What is it? Yeah, with a longer pattern. So what happens is that the angle got steeper. Okay, yes, it hit this area. It's a little bit wide, but it came from this direction rather than that direction. I know the X looks kind of funky on the on the monitor, but it really details everything that's happening. If you got too steep with the angles, the ball just stayed in that oil for so long it never had a chance to get back to the pocket. Oh, my. Just cannot get a break. And uh, Cote on that lane in particular. Now she goes back to the ball that was going high on that lane each single time. One goes into the two, but the two just angles itself around the four pin. This has been a challenging or tougher spare on tour lately. Because of our oil ratios, three to one, two to one, lanes are flatter, ball doesn't hold for a very long time, or because of the pattern's so long, it, it doesn't have a chance to roll into the spare itself. And she goes back to the ball that had gotten her into this position on the left lane. Very disappointed. You can see the frustration in her mind. She bowled so well throughout the week to come to the show and then have the reaction just kind of go away. You can see the green thumb hole. It's really starting to stand up taller as it rolls forward. Really heavy, heavy roll into the pocket needs the four pin. Again, we get to the final frames of a match with Shannon O'Keefe with a big lead. She had a big lead on Dasha Kovalova. And again, O'Keefe with a comfortable lead here of 33. And the big difference is Shannon has been clean. Uh, Kovalova had open frames, and now Brianna Cote with an open frame. A couple of them. You saw Danielle McEwen. You may have heard her just a couple of moments ago talking to Kelly and I, standing by. Even the misses are good misses. Yeah. At this point, she just wants to stay in the match, control the one-three pocket, leave makeable spares, which is the ten pin. And and you know, I could preach it to everyone out there. Everyone kind of has been in this this position at one point or another. You leave the ten pin, you make a move, then you leave a four pin, then you switch to seven, and it's like what happens? And it really just comes down to finding the right ball in your bag that's going to allow you to, to to carry that string of strikes. You saw it by the averages. The women did find it many times during the blocks of qualifying. Unfortunately, the ball is just going a little bit too long, not making that heavy roll into the pocket, and that's the result. Weaker ringing ten pin. O'Keefe remaining either strike or nine with one exception back in the second frame when she went seven spare. And this pair was used early in the tournament. And then of course, the right end of the house was being used for the final 12 games or so. And I said, well, how did you bowl? And did you bowl five and six? She goes, I, I think so. I, I think I had the front nine. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. So she's comfortable on this pair. But the great thing is we're, we're staying in the same building to bowl the TV finals as we did to qualify, and that's a, that's a huge asset to the ladies. And Shannon O'Keefe is another giant step closer to another match, sticking around. Watch the control. If you go back to match number one, Shannon was rolling the ball over 18 at the arrows. Now look how much deeper she is. She's two to three boards further left. There's that shotgun towards a three pin, and again, the ball just makes that slight tip at the end to go through the pocket. 
best case scenario, she puts a strike up on the board. Worst case scenario, she leaves a 10 pin. Went back to the original ball. And that's just not the, the memory she'll take away from this tournament is why couldn't I throw a strike on the right lane? Yeah, five shots on the right lane. Just, I mean, if, she, if the match was closer, she'd have to, she wouldn't be finishing on this lane, which is a good thing. But again, excellent performance throughout the week. Single pins fair. Shannon will most likely go on and see Danielle. Max score for Brianna Cote is 185. Of course, Shannon can strike out for 228. She's <laughs> laughing. I don't know what to do on the right lane. No, well, she's finished with it. She is. That's the good news. Husband Randy, I'm sure, is anxiously watching at home, cheering her on from a distance. And that whatever mathematical chance there was for her to win this match is now gone. So it will be Shannon O'Keefe versus Danielle McEwen. Well, I give her credit for smiling because I don't think I would have handled it nearly as well if I had been in that position as Brianna Cote, the reigning PWBA Player of the Year. And we'll see if she can make the next show in Florida. Women start off in the Midwest. Now they're going to make their way as they go towards the East Coast, first in the Clearwater, St. Petersburg area, and then up to Long Island and finish out this first swing with the U.S. Open. Well, that's what a lot of people do in Florida for the summer. They come down in the winter, and then they leave Florida and go to New York for the summer. So why wouldn't the PWBA do the same thing? <laughs> I'm sure the women will make great use of the weather in Florida during their downtime. As long as you enjoy humidity. Uh, I do. My hair doesn't, but I do. <laughs> well, Shannon O'Keefe, one of her favorite books was Burn Your Goals. And a book she said it was kind of the opposite of most of the mental toughness books that she read. And she read a lot of them. But right now she's just burning the lanes and taking down two opponents, routing them both. She's been steady. 227 first game. She could match that again or get up to 228. And uh, she has made it hard for her opponents to get off the map. We said in past TV telecasts that sometimes it's better if you're lower in, in the step ladder because mm -hmm. you get familiarized with the lanes, you build in your groove, you have momentum going forward. And that occurs very often out here. And there's the 228. Well, there you go. It's all going her way at the moment. Can Danielle McEwen stop her? We're gonna find out when our third match from Cedar Vale Lanes in Egan, Minnesota, the PWBA Twin Cities Open comes along right now. Shannon O'Keefe with a 227 and a 228 in complete control. Seven and 228 in their two matches. While her opponents have struggled with mistakes, O'Keefe has been as steady as you need to be to get into a matchup with Danielle McEwen. And it would ought to be a really good one. Let's take a look at some other finishers. Maria Jose Rodriguez led the event early and uh, ended up in sixth. Clara Guerrero, who is the number one seed in the Queens telecast, a past champion, Rocio Restrepo, Stephanie Johnson, Lauren Pate, Brandy Cordaleski, Liz Johnson made the last spot in 12th, narrowly edging out. Number 13, Kelly Kulik, who had a 300, the only one to do so. We will continue with our coverage of the PWBA Twin Cities Open. And you see number one seed Missy Parkin in the frame yet, but this one could have bombs bursting in the air with Danielle McEwen and Shannon O'Keefe. A terrific crowd here at Cedar Vale Lanes for our third match. Danielle McEwen seated on the left. It's told Shannon O'Keefe, you can start in the left lane, if you would, please. Danielle, the number two seed. Shannon, the number four seed. Well, she's had a lot of those today, but she's been around the pocket in virtually every shot. 
Only a few miscues for Shannon. I think one was just physical execution. Same come, ball. Yeah, come to think of it, that's the only one I can yeah. think of now. This is her third match. You're right, Kelly. That's, that's just the one, that, and she converted the spare. Steady as she goes for O'Keefe. We'll see if Danielle McCune can do something the other opponents so far today, Dasha Kovalova and Brianna Cote, have not been able to do, which is put up a bit of a fight. Uh, Shannon's been allowed to start things out, and we'll see what's coming up with Danielle. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number two seed from Stony Point, New York, Danielle McEwen. <laughs> Danielle, who averaged 229.4. We haven't even gotten to Missy Parkin territory yet. Same result as Shannon, that inevitable ring time. Six shots in practice when they come over. Right lane was troublesome for both Dasha as well as Brianna. That's really the difference in the match. O'Keefe has done well with the right lane, and she's the only one so far that has managed it. Ball roll. All comes down to ball roll. What your axis rotation is, what your tilt is, makes a huge difference. You saw that Danielle's looking for her eighth career PWBA Tour title. She was on the Queens Telecast, seemingly having the match in hand, only to get hit with a 7-10 in the 10th frame. Still some clutch bowling beat her, but uh, that undoubtedly made uh, the trip to Minnesota. Had to be on her mind, which, again, put it behind you and moved forward. traffic cleared out there that could have been a lot worse yeah so there's something interesting I don't know but there's there's a little bit of wiggle a little bit of wiggle the ball is coming out of the oil into the buff back into the oil back into the buff so it kind of makes a double motion almost like a fishtail waver mm -hmm. as it's going down the lane I kind of saw it on that on that reaction Danielle had well, she mentioned she was nervous last week at that Queens event but pretty sure she'll be more comfortable today Something else we're seeing here with the four of the five bowlers, strong histories with Team USA. And Shannon O'Keefe is closing out her Team USA career at the end of the year, and along with Stephanie Johnson. These ladies have left a great legacy with that program. Picks her. Hey, you know what? Never take the ringing ten out of the equation. Exactly. Well, again, you've got to find ways to carry. It's not ball. It's not speed. Angle into the pocket. So 31. Shannon's very big. Her and Brian are big on where you're sliding. That de depends on where the laydown point is. So if she's sliding 31, she's laying the ball roughly down by board 25 or 26. Six to seven board spread is the average for professional athletes. 21, 22 at the arrows. And then something interesting I'll point out here in a few moments. Cool. Yeah, many times when we're watching the ball get on the lane, I always tend to highlight where the break point is. Okay, that's where the ball is going to come off the end of the pattern and change direction to the pocket. But there's two indicators on the lane. So watch right here. As the ball is going down, you see the first one right here? Here's the first one. So it becomes a box. She's basically fitting the ball in between the center of that box using both indicators to shape the ball at the end of the pattern. Well, there is the best-looking strike I think we've seen on that right lane from any of our competitors. That was absolutely hammered through the face of the pocket. I would say so, Dave. Excellent shot. Watch the ball as it goes towards the 8-pin. Four-step approach. 31, 21, 13. Ball splits the 8-9 and continues to go left off the back deck. Getting rid of those troublesome stone eight and stone nines that plague players from time to time. And you see what Danielle and Shannon have done since the re reformation of the PWBA. Nice there go. Anything else? 
leaves the 2-8. Not quite lucky on that carry. That, to me, that ball is just where it's so effective on the right lane. It's just not changing direction. It's possibly burning up. She's 22. There's that 14, so she's a little bit further right. Same zone, same zone. But you can see how the ball rolls forward quickly. That means seeing it that slow motion, the ball is burning up. But for a pro, that's very, very manageable shot, 2-8. Yeah. So a routine spare for McEwen, but O'Keefe is working a double. Yeah, off her hand, great shot. She was, I think she did pretty good, but she's, yeah, as I see it, the ball was burning up, simple terms. Losing its energy too quickly to get back to the pocket. Quitter 10 there, unbelievable. If we're getting frustrated just watching it, imagine what the player feels. Right. Again, great execution, solid roll, colors are migrating on the ball, ball deflects a little bit, six balls flat for the 10. Cross lane for the spare, Shannon is by far one of the best spare shooters on tour. She's had to be today. This is the other thing. She's been mistake free. And that consistency has kept her on the stepladder. Missy Parkin awaits the winner. Missy was the number one seed here a year ago. And lost to Dasha Kovalova. And it was a good game. It's not like Missy shot 180 or no, 190. I think no. she shot like 238 to, no, to lose. It was unbelievable that day, though. be just a tablespoon high. And we welcome you to Cedar Vale Lanes, the PWBA Twin Cities Open in Egan, Minnesota, just outside of Minneapolis, along with multiple major champion Kelly Kulik. I'm Dave Lamont and our CBS Sportsnet crew. This is match number three, Shannon O'Keefe and Danielle McEwen. And the Q in the number two seed, Shannon O'Keefe, was the number four seed, taking on Dasha Kovalova in the first match. And Kovalova is the defending champion in Egan. This is the closest that anyone's been to Shannon at this point in these matches today. Oh, wide right. Look at that come back like that, though. Wow. I didn't think that was coming back at all, to be honest with you. Off her hand, it was really off her hand to the right. What does that tell you? Okay, well, what tells me is that all the women have been tracking that certain section of the lane, and because of all that traction, it's created a hook spot right in this section of the lane. So the body of the lane allows for the friction or the hook to make that change in direction and bring its way back to the pocket. So that's kind of, that's a good sign. That's a good signal. When you miss right and it comes back, that says, okay, I've got a little bit more room. Maybe I can move a little bit left of my feet, have that hook spot down lane and use it as an advantage. See what Danielle did on Tuesday night, a frustrating event for her, no question. Quick, quick turnaround. In some ways, that's probably better. You've got to, here you are, you're in a new center, you've got to practice, you've got to qualify, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, and it's obviously paid off for McEwen. There you go, flush that down at lane Good number shot. five, the left lane. Yeah, I thought the ball burned up a little bit. She might have got her hand around that spot. The spot just a little bit more than she did the frame before on this lane. Solid ball reaction. So let's take you back through what you might have missed earlier. And we had Shannon O'Keefe and uh, Dasha Kovalova. These are the two most recent champions of this event in Minnesota. And Shannon O'Keefe, you see the steadiness. Nothing worse than nine spare. Uh, Kovalova had trouble, particularly if you look at the even numbered frames. That was her right lane. This right lane has kind of been an unintended co-star 
of our event here. It's been the lane that has been the trickiest. And then it was the same problem for Brianna Cote, the PWPA Player of the Year from 2021. But no trouble for Shannon O'Keefe. All smiles so far. But now she's in a much closer match, and she's been at this point against Danielle McEwen with Missy Park in the top seed awaiting the winner of this match. O'Keefe, should she run the ladder today, would tie Lori Nichols, Anna Marie Dugan, Cindy Coburn, Carroll, and Kim Adler for 15 PWBA championships. That would be 15th all time. Pretty. Right lane, 10 pin has been her nemesis, makes the ball change there. So goes to the stronger pro life, asymmetric bowling ball, makes the ball change, ball starts up a little bit sooner, watch the pin reaction in the back. Still sliding 31, 19, 20. 11, 12, you can see the kind of the pinkish or red in the ball as it migrates upward, gets in that forward roll position. She liked it off her hand, she knew it. And again, back to back, Jack. using two different bowling balls, sticking with the same ball she started with on the left lane. Different ball on the right lane. There's that fire and that aggression we often see in Shannon when she gets even more comfortable and on a roll to string even more strikes. And McEwen trying to push back made a beautiful, beautiful shot and couldn't get a break. Just a touch long. Danielle's been bowling really great back-to-back -back shows, and she continues to see the picture very clearly. So in her mind, what she's worked on in the off-season, battling that injury with her foot and everything, she's come back to know her equipment, seeing the picture from kind of like a, a dot formation on the lane, from the arrows to the break point to the pocket, really seeing things very well. Well, it is I've been waiting all day to say this. It is time for our Bowl TV Highlight of the Week. There was only one 300 bowl this, and this woman with this killer shirt, Kelly Kulik, ripping apart the rack at 300. It was the highlight of my third round. Well, it should have been. <laughs> the scores were not very high for me the rest of the day. It's been a while since I've done that, but it was a great feeling and a great moment to share with the fans here at Cedarville Lanes. Oh, another ringer for Danielle McEwen. Another good looking shot. The one, the three, three goes into the six. It's just enough angle to make it wrap itself around the 10. Slow motion. The lift. That was scary. CBS Sports, the month of May, Mental Health Awareness Month. Thank you for CBS Sports for that moment. Looking for three in a row for Shannon O'Keefe. Yes, the 258 max score is still alive for O'Keefe. And that look on Danielle McEwen's face is, why is Shannon getting all the breaks today and no one else is? There's moments in time during the week where like the pins felt like they weighed a pound. <laughs> and so they're normal three pounds, whatever ounces, but just the lightest touch knocked them all over. And that was be began the frustration. You're in the pocket, you're in the pocket, can't carry, can't carry. And then you witness your players around you just getting all these, these breaks or these type of carries, which you can't create. Very challenging. Four straight for Shannon O'Keefe, and she's 
beginning to get a grip on this match as she did on the other two. No blame her for being happy with that. Well, she won last year early at the ITRC mm -hmm. and then um, had some stellar shows throughout the season. It's been a while since she's been in the winner's circle. I know she's got some things on her schedule with Team USA before her season comes to an end in her career at Team USA, but she's created such a legacy there as well as McKendry. Well, that was a strange, it looked like the, the head pair, the two pin that flew over the, the four seven or around it. Really, really high on the head pin. Yes, you're right, Dave. The two pin just was so high, it wrapped itself right around the 4-7 altogether. Now you don't usually see a ringing 4-7. No. Uh, that's just another evil break that uh, Danielle has had to deal with here. Kind of a fast eight. Not kind of, it was. The spare shooting has been exemplary. The other thing about Shannon, I think she's only had something worse than nine spare or strike once today. Yes. And that was a seven, and she covered it. Pretty ball there for Danielle McCune, but it might be too little too late. Another week of frustration for Danielle, but really phenomenal at the Queens to make it to the champion, to make it to the final round of five on that telecast last week. Quick turnaround, show on Tuesday night, back at it makes a show here on Sunday night, and now she'll have to carry this on to the next stop in Florida. Well, getting the 10 pins to fall now, but a 205 max isn't likely going to be able to cut it. And I think that realization has just hit her. Four score for Danielle McEwen. Takes a third place finish here. So we're down to two. Missy Parkin and Shannon O'Keefe. And it continues, the party, the O'Keefe party continues for Shannon. She even almost a Michael Jordan-esque shoulder shrug there after another strike. all the time but again even when it's not a strike it's something very very manageable so Shannon O'Keefe 227 228 now more than likely 247 in defeating Danielle McEwen Two forty-seven for Shannon O'Keefe. For those of you watching on CBSSports.com, our streaming coverage will conclude shortly, but we will continue on CBS Sports Network. You can find us by going to CBSSportsNetwork.com/channel finder. Well, three in a row for Shannon O'Keefe, and if she runs the ladder, she'll have a fifteenth PWBA championship. But standing in her way is the number one seed, Missy Parkin, who's hungry for victory. That match for the title is next. So Shannon O'Keefe started the day as a number four seed, handily defeated Dasha Kovalova, took care of Brianna Cote, the player of the year from last year, and then got really hot in defeating Danielle McEwen. So the scores have improved for Shannon as the day has gone on. Has gone on. Now she takes on the number one seed, Missy Parkin.
keeping your elbow in and swing as straight as possible are keys to a good shot. As DeAndres Beatty tells us in this week's BCTV Tip of the Week. One thing that I hear from a lot of bowlers that I coach is that they can't help but pull the ball. I'm going to give you two tips to combat that. Number one, make sure that your ball, when it's at the top of your backswing, you allow the ball's weight to swing your arm. You're not helping it, you're not controlling it. And the second tip is to key on this part of your elbow. We wanna make sure this stays in throughout the whole approach. You're gonna make sure that it brushes your side three times. One, two, and especially right here. By keeping tabs on making sure that the ball is swinging your arm and having your elbow in, your ball will hit your target more often and you will pull the ball less. All right, thank you, DeAndre, very much for the title. Shannon O'Keefe, Missy Parkin. O'Keefe trying to win this championship a second time. Missy was the number one seed a year ago and lost in the championship match. future of the sport oil pattern is 45 feet in length, only 22 mils of oil, which is on the low side, but a very high scoring pace. Key notes here, look at this section, the first 10 feet of the lane, that's where the nine mils is located. So that means there's about 12 more milliliters of oil from the sections from here at 42 feet, and then here at 24 feet, and again, this section here. We're bowling on Prodigy Oil this week. Notice this dark line here. The women are gonna stay close to that as possibly as they can. And then as the lanes break down, you'll see the women start to creep further and further inside. But again, keeping very nice tight angles towards that one three pocket. And I guarantee you, we're gonna see some very high scores on this telecast tonight. And Kelly, they've come from the person who's gonna start things off in our championship match, Shannon O'Keefe, 227, 228, 247. But now she takes on Missy Parkin for the championship. Yeah, all the high scores really just come from Shannon and her, yep. and her games. However, we'll see what Missy does. And as she has done virtually every time, she comes out firing with a strike. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number one seed from San Clemente, California, Missy Parkin. And that one title was the Queens in Syracuse in 2011. She has picked up some PWBA regional titles. She has certainly made her share of shows. That's a different ball than she had yesterday. Yeah, she was using one of our most aggressive bowling balls within our line with a very aggressive cover. Um, did a couple different layouts through the course of the two days of qualifying. Different ball, different time. Telecast is something unique. But she's going to do similar to what Shannon does, but even more direct towards that 1-3 pocket. Still no trouble at all for Parkin. If she was blasting this place apart yesterday, it was really, you could hear her uh, almost all over the house. Her strikes were that solid. And by the way, although it won't happen to Missy, any player who rolls a 300 game during the telecast will receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowling.com. Visit GoBowling.com to find local bowling centers. Get tips from the pros and all the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. And I don't like them. <laughs> we have an interference on the course right now. What happened? There's a spider on the approach. Oh, look at that. So no arachnophobia for Rob Gottschall, our line judge and pest expert. Yeah. You think you're indoors, you're safe from every element outside. No, unfortunately not. Something with eight legs managed to find its way to the approach. Missy waited for the clearance. That's the ball she used yesterday. Ooh, so that's the result. <laughs> Rocket to the pocket. Yeah, well, she's noticed after talking to the ball reps and having some conversation, witnessing what she saw, Shannon's using two different balls. She switched the balls in the right lane. So now Missy, if she continues to do so, she's gonna use an even more aggressive ball in the left lane and maybe switch to the right one on the right lane. 
And Missy, we all know her unique style. She did, does spin the ball a little bit more, but she said during her interview she's going to spin it even more to keep it online. There's that flat 10 we've been watching all telecast long. That one looked a little wide right for Shannon. There's been a hook spot developed, same zone. Gets it a little bit further right down the lane. Ball just loses a little bit too much energy. Flat 10. A lot of change since things started for Shannon in that first match on these lanes. Yeah, I, it's again, the women just have to continue to keep moving further and further left, but yeah. again, keep the angles tight in front of them. So we might lose a little bit of carry. You know, I watched you yesterday a few times, and as the day went on, you were moving well left. Uh, you know, you kept, I think your line looked the same, but you're, you took everything further left as every game went on. So they're doing the exact same thing. Yes. If you're looking for some great PWBA gear, visit the official online store of the PWBA at shoppwba.com. You may not throw it like Kelly, but perhaps you can at least try to look like Kelly. <laughs> I think all the women on tour would prefer to throw it like Shannon <laughs> with all of her success in the last last few years alone. And a trip 4-9 that time. Everything going her way today. It is. When you catch the breaks, they keep coming towards you. This one is definitely high in the head pin, though. 4-9, I said the pins fall very easily in the center. You can see it doesn't quite get far right. First indicator is board 15. The second one is at board 10 at 43 feet. That was definitely inside. Could have been the 4-9. Gets lucky, trips both pins out. Yep, you got definitely going to use two balls, and there we get a trip on the 10. Missy's noticed the quite angle on her feet. Her first step goes forward, five-step approach, drops the ball on the swing. What I really like about Missy's game is her left arm right there. It is very free and very um, open, which means she doesn't really grab the ball on her backswing. She has a very nice loose swing, great knee bend. Left arm goes out to the side and also notable, many of you do know this, but for those who don't, she does roll 16-pound equipment. Yep. So small in stature, but strong in strength. Need some help. Doesn't quite get it. A strong impact indeed on that shot. This is an unusual event for Missy in one regard. Her family's not here. Yes, and she did mention about that last night because I, I did witness her mom, her step her in-laws travel with her and DJ and Drew was with her last week at the Queens. Didn't have the stellar performance that she wanted to have. Went back home with all of them, came back out to Minnesota and knows that the support is definitely being fulfilled back home in California. All right, she turns away from that knowing that she covered it. I bet DJ's screaming at the television right now being at home. Look at those pretty faces. Yeah, you see that Dadasha was the champion last year. She made the show again today. Shannon obviously is still rolling along. Missy Parkin was the number one seed last year and lost to Kovalova. So uh, very definitely a comfortable house for three of our five finalists. And when you walk in the, the door from the outside into Fitz's restaurant, you could see Brent Prentice, the proprietor of the center, all with the, the champions in the winner's circle from the PWA Tour. Yes. Shannon O'Keefe just continues. Now, this is a tough match early on for her, but the same with Danielle McEwen, and O'Keefe ended up with a 247. The match, that match was close early also. Yeah, she goes really high in the left lane, trips the 4-9. Now watch this, skates down the lane. Look how the pins just kind of fall out to the side. She's got the best of all worlds. She's got hold in the middle. She's got a little recovery to the right. And now she's in that technology strike where anything that hits a 1-3 seems to be falling for her. off her hand. That's pretty a strike as you'll see today from uh, Shannon O'Keefe. That gives her three in a row and four of five and puts all the pressure on Missy Parkin here. She's got a good fan in the audience and 
Vermilia's daughter, uh, son is there as well. 10 pin straight back. And again, nothing doing on that right lane for anyone not named O'Keefe. mentioned this is just the third stop of a dozen on the PWBA tour when the St. Petersburg Clearwater Open on the CBS SN uh, Sunday 1 o'clock Eastern and then the BBL Classic June 12th and the U.S. Women's Open June 21st all of those on CBS Sports Network. I know that the BBL Classic is part of a three event series so the televised event will be of that BBL Classic but there will be two events also coinciding in Long Island that week. Bull TV is a great spot for those. Mark, and that one slipped and slid and leaves her with a bucket. With her spin that Missy has with her unique release, it just goes really, really straight down the lane. It's all four. Got it. And an eight pin was a little bit late, but that is our Cisco spare of the week. That bucket conversion by Missy Parkin and a critical shot for her as she tries to keep Shannon O'Keefe within her yeah. grasp. You can tell this is spare of the week because look, she hits the two pin on the light side, <laughs> comes off the side rail wall, takes out the eight pin. Watch the two go off into the side, come back over and say, nope, you're not standing. You're going down. There really is no textbook. When you hit it in center, the pins go down. You need a little bit of luck. Now Shannon O'Keefe has had a lot of skill and a little bit of luck. And she is almost ready to be a champion again. Got some work to do. And that is what they are playing for right there in the middle, surrounded, of course, by Twins and Vikings. And a terrific crowd here in Egan at Cedarvale Lanes. They have been into it from the start. And Shannon O'Keefe's put on a great show for them, coming from the number four position into a lead that you saw. Having some fun banter with the crowd and the audience. Yeah, a couple friends over there, but uh, she's also made some new friends as well. And Taylor Bailey, one of her past students and players at McKendry. And Vermeer's son over there cheering her on. Might help loosen her up a little bit, too. Everyone has their own technique, how they stay comfortable. People often ask the question with the mental game, do you like to talk to people? Do you not like to talk to people? Shannon does, I personally do. When, you, when you're in the zone and you're comfortable within your game, then you can be a little bit more relaxed by doing other things, and that's just carrying conversation. Strike there for Shannon O'Keefe to keep the lead on Parkin. You know, Shannon's done a terrific job coaching at McKendry and having her, her athletes on the last couple of shows, the PWBA Tour. First, Brianna Clemmer making the finals of the Rockford Open, and last week, Hope Gramley making them at the USBC Queens. The folks at McKendry are pretty proud. And Shannon extremely proud of, uh, in fact, a lot of the conversation had with her today reflected on her athletes at McHenry and how proud she is of them. 
And boy, Missy Parkin stepped into that shot. Yeah, don't count Missy out. I mean, Shannon pretty much has dominated all the matches previously to Missy showing up here in the championship match. She's only down by 15 pins. She's working on a strike. Light last time on the left lane. She will force Shannon to finish. But that's what I call a rocket to the pocket. She knew it, too. Every once in a while, a bowler will show maybe a little bit of doubt. There was zero doubt in her mind that was going to be a strike. Yeah, I got to bowl with Missy back in November in Dubai when we... We won the World Championships. What a special moment that was. Needs a double. And there's the 4-9. We've had threatening notes in the 4-9. It was going to show up, and there it is. Shannon was able to roll it. Missy kept her angles very, very tight. Okay, that's what's so special about this pattern is close back. The pocket's at board 17, and Missy is right on top of it. I hate to say it, it actually could have been worse. It could have been the big four. She leaves a 4-9, which is still makeable for Missy. And she was clean, I believe, almost all six games yesterday in the qualifying round, except for the 4-9. Oh, perfect. Big crowd applause on that one for Missy. Shalene Zlikafai was standing up. She used to be Missy's roommate, occasionally roommate on tour. Watch this, the spare ball cross lane. You just have the edge, the left side of the four pin. She executes it perfectly as a four pin. Doesn't just slide into the nine pin. It kicks its butt and sends it to the right gutter. Impossible to do any better than that and impeccable timing for Parkin to keep Shannon O'Keefe working hard. <laughs> And that's it. Shannon hasn't felt any pressure in any of the previous matches. Okay. Comes up light there on that right lane where she's oh, her worst count has been a seven spare up until yep. this match where she just leaves the bucket. This is her biggest leave so far today. And she, this is, she started in the four versus five match. This is her fourth match. And she hasn't left anything close to this all afternoon. Perfect, right in the pocket. So still has a lead of 15 pins. Really, her only two imperfect executions have been on the right lane, where in the first match she left the, the 2 5 8. And this one also, she just accelerated quickly at the bottom, leaves the bucket, makes the spare. Still a 15 pin lead. Max score 239 on 224 for Missy. through the nose that time. So the last couple of shots have been not the quality that she has had throughout the day. The only difference I really saw in that delivery was just looks like it was a little bit slower inside at the lanes. There's that hook spot the last minute just checked up at the very last moment. Leaves the 610. Perfectly executed. And I have to point out, in four games on TV, Shannon has been clean throughout yep. all of them. Not one missed spare, not one missed opportunity, and that's what makes Shannon so great. But the lead dropped a little bit to 13. Here's our BPAA moment of the match. It's this execution of the 4-9, and it was indeed executed by Missy Parkin. So needed a little bit more time. Takes a re-rec on the right lane. Why not? And now look at the max scores. Missy needs to strike here. She is to put on any pressure. She did strike on this lane twice so far. Looks good. In case you're wondering how she got to average 230 this week and be the number one seed on our telecast, here's your answer. Yeah, big dynamic change. Again, Shannon pretty much has worked her way up the step ladder with not much pressure throughout the competition. Missy really dart bullets to the 1-3 pocket. 10 pins straight back in the pocket. She liked it off her hand. She's looking for that second win. Obviously, the Queen's back in 2011. She's been runner up multiple times. Including the number one seed here last year. He 
need some help. Uh oh. We both saw it. Yep, insider target. She's been playing so tight to the pocket, to the 1 3. This one, it's pretty much 22 to about 19 20. There was just no angle off her hand into that 1 3 pocket. Hits the head pin straight on and leaves the 4 6. Well, as you pointed out, the shot that led to the 4 9, you thought could have been worse. Yes. When you said it could have been a big four, here she leaves half of that. And all of a sudden, Shannon O'Keefe. Is ready for a victory lap. There is your champion, her 15th title, her second time here in Egan at Cedar Vale Lanes. And she joins Lori Nichols, Anne Marie Dugan, Cindy Coburn Carroll, and new Hall of Famer Kim Adler as 15 time PWBA champions. Shannon O'Keefe climbs the ladder to victory. <laughs> O'Keefe is the winner, defeating Missy Park in the top seat, 213 to 192. She is standing by with Kelly Kulik for the trophy presentation. And here to present the trophy to Shannon, the proprietor of Cedar Vale Lanes for the champion of the PWA Twin Cities Open, Mr. Brent Prentice. Hey, Shannon, congratulations. Our first two-time champion, 2022, here you go. Book ends, so yeah. number two. <laughs> Shannon O'Keefe, you just accomplished something. You, you have another achievement where you join Lori Nichols, Anne-Marie Dugan, and just recently Kim Adler for 15 titles on tour since it relaunched in 2015. What does this mean? Are you trying to make me cry? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, God is so good. Um, I just was a little girl with a dream once to win one, and here I am with 15, and it's unbelievable. Who do you want to thank? We want to thank you, USBC sponsors, BPA, of course, for this tour event and for this 2022 season. Congratulations to Shannon O'Keefe, your 2022 PWA Twin Cities champion.